A one-year-old e-commerce startup hopes to take on the e-commerce world with its latest boost of $240 million in Series C funding led by the SoftBank Vision Fund. Brandless, as it's called, launched just last year and offers over 300 organic and high-quality household items and food items each at the price point of just $3. Here now to discuss, Brandless co-founder and CEO, Tina Sharkey. So Brandless, Tina, doesn't mean no brand in your vision. What exactly no. does it mean, though? Tell me the vision. So first of all, think of it like brand less. So live more, brand less. Brand less, the problem is that people have lost trust in brands. Mm -hmm. So 78% of millennials say they don't want to buy the products and the brands that they grew up with. And people want brands that reflect their values. So when my co-founder Ido Leffler and I founded the company, we said the first thing we're going to do is reimagine what it means to be a brand, one that's based on truth, one that's based on transparency, and one that is in direct connection with the community that it serves, and then ones whose basic value is about scaling kindness. Now, entering the e-commerce landscape, you're gonna get asked about Amazon. You know, why walk into a market that is so dominated by one player? So we don't think about Brandless as competing with Amazon. Why Amazon not? is the everything store. Brandless, first and foremost, is a community. And it's a community of people who believe that everyone deserves better and better doesn't have to cost more and that we can curate and edit a very simplified assortment, assortment of what you're looking for. So we search shampoo on Amazon, you're going to get what, 20,000 results? You say, I only want to see the clean ones because on Brandless we sell shampoo that has no phthalates, no sulfates, is not tested on animals. So you're going to get one great shampoo and it's $3. It's simplified. Amazon has everything. We have products that we've created, we've curated for the community, that we sell to the community, and it's not a lot of choice, which for a lot of people is very relaxing. It's anti-overwhelmed. Now, you're only a year old, and yet you've personally won over Masayoshi's <laughs> son. How did you do that? Um, I would like to say that it was me who won him over, <laughs> but the truth is that the products and the story and the opportunity to reimagine an industry is what he has built the SoftBank Vision Fund for. And he's built a team of investors like Jeff Hausenbold and Justin Wilson, who are joining our board, who are operators, who know how to scale things, who see that the CPG industry is really broken. It is so many layers, and it was built for a very different time. Products were built for the shelf, not for shipping, and that they were going through stores, and there were markups, and it was just terribly inefficient. At Brandless, what he saw was that we can actually completely disrupt that supply chain and go direct to consumers and build direct relationships with consumers and use data and artificial intelligence and machine learning to actually create the products that people are looking for and de-risk all of the big sort of paradox of choice when there's way too many products out there. Let's talk about risk because you've been in this business a long time. You ran Baby Center, a $500 million valuation. That's a lot to live up to. How do you plan to use this money and how do you plan to deliver on that big vision? So. In order to reimagine an industry, um, that is not just like a single swing at the bat. Um, it is about investing in, first and foremost, our people, um, building out an extraordinary team, using it to scale our technology and our data science and all of that infrastructure, and to create more products, greater assortment, and accelerate bringing brand lists to everyone. Talk to me about the costs. How can you make money here? How is it possible that that shampoo and that popcorn is really only $3? <laughs> so, well, it's actually a lot less than that. The problem is that you are getting ripped off. Mm -hmm. And so if people really understood what things cost versus what you're paying for them, you'd be sort of freaking out and riding in the streets. But because it's CPG, like the truth is the price is right. It's still on the air three decades later. Why? People don't actually know what things cost. They kind of know what their budgets are, but they don't really know what things cost. And in the better market, organics, non-GMOs, EPA Safe for Choice certified, like everything that we do is better. And they charge more for it, and that's not okay. So where does your stuff come from? How is it curated? And is it really unique, or is it something that I could get somewhere else? So we work with an extraordinary global community of, of partners and vendors that we co-develop these products with. Um, almost all of our food is from North America, although our 
organic uh, olive oils um, are from Italy, as are our organic pastas. Um, and uh, we have products from all over. And we co-develop them. So in the beauty and personal care area, a lot of those are formulations that we are in the labs doing. Our food scientists are working with the various uh, manufacturers. And you know, in some cases, if we're packaging organic brown sugar, um, there's not a lot of co-development there um, because that's not a special formula. That's just pure um, brown sugar. Now, it's been compared to Muji, the you know, Japanese home goods store, which has been a sensation. What are your plans for international expansion? Or does that come now or later? Um, I would say that comes later, but there's no doubt that with Brandless and with the product market fit we've seen here and with our muses from around the world that really inspire us, uh, we're building a global brand and more importantly, a global movement.